thoughts, you can rest assured you got an adrenal problem. That means the more important it is to make sure you're drinking electrolytes, getting your electrolytes. Of course, your electrolyte BTT, your electrolyte rich beyond tangy tangerine, can be super duper important and helpful. As can just drinking plain old salt water, just drinking Celtic sea salt or Himalayan salt. How do you like that? The higher your aldosterone is and the longer your blood pressure is elevated, the more likely you are to be salt efficient. And of course, our brilliant medical model says, well, that's when you don't want to drink salt, or that's when you want to stay away from salt. Now, I'm not talking here about Morton salt. I'm talking about Celtic sea salt or Himalayan salt. Morton's, Morton's uh, or any table salt will give you sodium and chloride, but the main salts in the body are the potassium, the magnesium, and the calcium in addition to the sodium chloride. So the higher your blood pressure or the longer your blood pressure is elevated, the more likely you are to be salt deficient, especially if you have other symptoms of adrenal, uh, of excess adrenal activity, including melasma and, and dark spots, the more important it is to drink salt water. And you know how you can tell if you should be drinking salt water? If you feel better after you drink it, all right? If you feel better after you do a little bit of Celtic sea salt water, you know you needed that salt, regardless of what your doctor told you. And by the way, intelligent researchers now understand that uh, it's time to end this silliness about low salt. If your doctor is still on this low salt kick, then uh, you might want to tell him to do a little bit of research. You might want to tell him to like become a researcher or a student, uh, a student of biochemistry. Fact of the matter is, aldosterone and blood elevated blood pressure typically elevated aldosterone and elevated blood pressure typically lead to salt deficiency, which means you want salt, not low salt. You want to make sure you're having salt: potassium, magnesium, calcium, sodium, and chloride. In the skin, sweat glands and oil glands are also activated by the stress hormone aldosterone. We've talked about oily skin and, and uh, uh, oily skin and, uh, that's associated with acne or just oily skin in general as a sign that the body is in distress as a manifestation of the stress response. And we've talked about oily skin as it, as it is a result of elevated cortisol, but also elevated aldosterone will lead to oily skin. You actually have little aldosterone, aldosterone sensitive oil glands. Oil glands and sweat glands for that matter are both responsive to aldosterone and blocking aldosterone with drugs is actually a dermatology strategy for treating acne. There's a drug called spironolactone. Some of you may have heard of. Spironolactone is a drug that blocks aldosterone. And the logic is, by blocking aldosterone, you dry up your skin oils. Now, spironolactone is a blood pressure drug. It was developed to lower blood pressure by blocking aldosterone. But it turns out that will also help slow down the production of oil. Sometimes dermatologists will prescribe it topically. I used to make a spironolactone cream for patients who had really oily skin. They just apply topically. and It was supposed to help dry up skin oils via this aldosterone blocking effect, I never did find it to be very effective, understandably, because aldosterone is a stress hormone and you're not gonna lower it by rubbing it on your skin. So how do you make sure your aldosterone and your adrenal glands are all operating and operating correctly, everything's firing on all cylinders? How do we support aldosterone so it's not being secreted in excess? How do you stabilize it? How do we protect and nourish the adrenal glands to prevent burnout? And adrenal fatigue, well, there's lots of ways. Nutritional supplementation is great. Dietary strategy is great. And there's a really cool strategy you could use. I'll tell you what that is here when we come back from our break. Okay, we are back on the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you're on hold, hang on. We'll get to you in just a moment. And we do have lines open for you if you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs or skin health, skin care products, ingredients, the longevity products, or if you have a success story or you'd like to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get to our calls here momentarily. So how do you make sure your aldosterone and your adrenal glands and your stress system is operating correctly? Well, there's lots of ways, and we're going to talk about a bunch of nutritional strategies. But one of my all-time favorite ways to stabilize the body, to relax the body, to uh, protect the adrenal glands, and to make sure your aldosterone system is running pristinely and operating correctly is to go out and get some sun. Lay out in the sun. Vitamin D which is stimulated by solar rays 
vitamin D hits the skin, hits cholesterol in the skin for that matter, and turns it into vitamin D. Vitamin D lowers aldosterone levels. Vitamin D is ridiculously important. It, there's so many ways vitamin D is important for health, for immune health, for digestive health, for relaxation reasons. Vitamin D, as it turns out, also lowers aldosterone levels. That means lower blood pressure. Vitamin D will lower your blood pressure. The sun is your best antihypertensive. When was the last time you got a prescription for the sun? Oh, never, because you don't pay for it. It's free. Nobody can bill you for the sun yet. You haven't figured out how to do that. I'm sure one of these days that'll happen. But for now, you can lower your, lower your blood pressure for free and improve digestive health and improve immune health and improve mood. All of these things are associated with vitamin D. Vitamin D, by the way, is well known as an a, um, anti-muscular anti-multiple sclerosis substance. Speaking of multiple sclerosis, it turns out melatonin is also important for helping reduce multiple sclerosis flare-ups. This is an article that I got here off of, uh, boom, 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 from the, uh, from the Mauricio Fares and Jorge Carelli Institute of Neurolog Neurological Research in Argentina. Seasonal flare-ups in patients with multiple sclerosis are caused by plummeting levels of melatonin. Making sure you're getting enough melatonin. Melatonin is also super relaxing. Anyway, vitamin D, antihypertensive via the sun. Another reason to get out in the sun. Doctors will tell you to stay out of the sun. If you have hypertension, you avoid the sun, you're increasing the likelihood that you're going to be put on an ACE inhibitor or, or an antihypertensive of, of some kind. Lower your blood pressure by laying out in the sun. Now, that's my kind of medicine. All right, got so much more to say. I want to tell you about African Americans uh, and their risk of hypertension because of their pigmentation, as it turns out. We'll talk about that tomorrow or on our next Bright Side episode. And then we'll talk about some nutritional strategies for the adrenal glands, for lowering blood pressure, and also for stabilizing aldosterone. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. Let's go to California and talk to my buddy Graziano. What's up, bro? How you doing, man? Hey, Ben. It's good to talk to you. Good to talk to you as well. What's cooking? Oh, you want to talk about uh, the seizures? Is that what you were, you were yeah, talking about? Yeah, the seizures and the ketogenic. Diet. I've got a good friend. Uh, they got two sons that are like 13 and I think 11, and both of them have seizures. So okay. um, I just kind of, and I think they might be listening to the show right now. Oh, perfect. Or I'm send okay. To them, so. Let's talk about Sorry. seizure disorders, okay? And we'll talk about it as it relates to the ketogenic diet. First of all, a seizure. Uh, is a sign that the electrical current through the brain is jumpy. It's short-circuiting. Electrical, the body's an electrical system in general, but the most electrical part of the body is probably the brain. And electrical energy has to run smoothly through the brain. Under conditions of inflammation or nutritional deficiency, under conditions of high energy in the brain, especially in combination with nutritional deficiency, what you're going to end up with is short circuits. The energy will not be conducted in a smooth fashion, and you'll, it'll become jumpy. You want to look to inflammation, nutritional deficiencies, and also high energy, lots of, lots of electrical energy. Well, let's take the first one, the first element, which is super high amounts of electrical energy. Sugar is highly energetic, and this is, the, this is where the benefit of the ketogenic diet comes in. It's a low-sugar diet. You know, a lot of folks always, a lot of folks talk about the paleo diet. You know, the paleo diet is a marketing term. Paleo diet, paleolithic eating, this is all marketing. There's no way we're going to eat paleolithically. Our paleolithic ancestors didn't eat coconut flour. Our paleolithic ancestors ate raw meat or cooked, maybe quickly roasted meat. They didn't eat paleolithic snack bars and paleolithic gluten-free pizza. So you can't really eat paleo. That's not logical. But what is logical is to go ketogenic. Ketogenic means low carbohydrate and uh, mostly fat and protein, especially coconut oil fat. And coconut oil is super important for seizure disorders for that reason. So the ketogenic diet slows the body down. This is why it has so many multiple benefits. Being low sugar, it, has a, uh, it releases energy. The uh, uh, food energy is released slowly and in a kind of low level. When you eat sugar, you get a quick spike in energy. This is the problem with the standard American diet. We get these quick spikes of energy and then the body's energy management system has to kick in. With the ketogenic diet, which is a protein diet and a fat diet, protein, I, hate, I hesitate to say high protein or high fat, it's just, it's just mostly protein and mostly fat. 
good fat that is, that slows everything down in the body. That's why it's so helpful for cancer. That's why it's so helpful for longevity. That's why it's so helpful for brain issues. That's why it's so helpful for seizure disorders. Does that make sense the way I explain that, Graziano? It kind of slows yes, the body down. It's like your computer. You know, you don't want your hard drive running really hot. You want your hard drive running cool. That's why there's a fan in it. Well, it's the same thing with the body. The body is like a super high-tech biological computer. And just like you don't want your hard drive overheating, you don't want your body overheating. Sugar overheats it. The ketogenic diet cools things down, step number one. Step number two, if you're dealing with a seizure disorder, is you've got to stop the stream of inflammatory chemicals, inflammatory molecules that come in through the diet. That means staying away from any foods that cause any kind of digestive distress. Staying away from pro-inflammatory foods, again, sugars, refined flours, trans fatty acids, and pretty much any processed foods are going to make the brain hyper excitable, hyperactive. And speaking of hyper excitable, excitotoxins, these are food additives, especially food additives that are used to make f crappy foods more palatable, MSG and such. These things have to be avoided as well because, again, they hype up the brain. They run up, they, they rev up the electrical energy of the brain. So, number one, the ketogenic diet. Number two, staying away from pro inflammatory foods. And number three, stabilizing electrical energy with nutrition. And there's lots of wonderful nutrients that help do that. One of the most, is, uh, one of the most important is something called taurine, T A U R I N E. Everybody with a seizure disorder needs to be on taurine. Anybody with a heart problem should probably be on taurine also. You know, if you look in the ingredient deck of your Red Bull, you'll find taurine as an ingredient. Why? Because the taurine dampens the excess of energy of the caffeine. Caffeine is, m hypes up the electrical energy of the body. Taurine dampens that electrical energy. Wonderful for helping deal with seizure disorders. The amino acid glycine, likewise. Glycine's been used to treat seizure disorders since the 1920s. Taurine and glycine, also arginine might be helpful. The B vitamins are ridiculously important for all electrical issues, including seizure disorders. High doses of the B vitamins, especially niacin and thiamine, those can be helpful. Vitamin C, likewise, and also electrolytes, specifically potassium, sodium, calcium, magnesium, and chloride, the substances we've been talking about now for a couple of weeks. Hang tight, Grazia, a couple more things I want to tell you. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be, we'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. Got lines open at 844-236-6010. Graziano in California. You there, my man? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, so uh, seizure disorders are the manifestation of a hyper-excitable state. That's the bottom line. Okay, make sense so far? Yes, sir. Okay, it's compounded by inflammation, nutritional deficiency, perhaps low levels of oxygen, and certainly sugar is a big problem. Glycine, taurine, arginine, these are amino acids that can help slow down, uh, slow down things, uh, slow down uh, electrical energy, taurine especially, also glycine. Arginine, not so much, but arginine also has important brain health benefits. The B vitamins, vitamin C, all of your electrolytes, and then, of course, the ketogenic diet, and also caloric restriction in general, just eating less food, just fasting. Fasting is a great anti-seizure strategy, at least caloric restriction. And when I say caloric restriction, I'm not talking about food restriction. I'm talking about calorie restriction, so eating high-density, uh, nutritional, high-nutritional-density foods, low-calorie, high-nutrition. I call that the CRAN diet or the Cron diet, calorie restriction, optimum nutrition, and of course the Beyond Tangy Tangerine is a great way to do that. Bone soup, sprouts, living foods, eggs, nutrient dense foods, so you don't have to have as much calories. Calories are, represent heat and energy, and especially foods that are high calorie, low nutrition, those are the worst. Oxygenation, deep breathing techniques can help, again, for the same reason, to re relax that hyper excitable state. And then there's some miscellaneous relaxing nutrients, GABA, is one, so is lithium, maybe a 500 milligrams of GABA a day, taking GABA before you go to bed. Lithium is another relaxing nutrient. Melatonin, that can help relax you, although I don't know necessarily if I would use melatonin for a child, but melatonin still has relaxing effects. Niacin, very important B vitamin for the brain, and then of course essential fatty acids, particularly omega-3 fatty acids that come from fish and also from flax. 
Is that helpful, Graciano? Got lots of good information there, my man. Yeah, that makes that's sense. Good. And How you one other, calm the one body down. Thing. Yes. And then one other thing, a good story. I wanted to, I've been wanting to call and let you know.